you sure you heard right? The doctor said she were poisoning him. But how? I expect she were putting it in his meals. Let's face it, she'd not be short of opportunities. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't say I'm that surprised myself. I mean, I, she has the look of a criminal to me. The last time I saw her face that hard was on Mount Rushmore. Mm. The eyes of the clincher, far too close together. One false eyelash should do for the pair of us. <laughs> not that we should judge, and none of our business, really. Eh? Oh, uh, uh, afternoon, Jerry. Oh, all right, are you? I was. And for the record, I made a mistake with my medication, all right? Aye. He let her know where he kept it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but young bird. Mrs. Love, you know, I think I could happily live on baked potatoes. <laughs> a baked potato is all well and good, so long as it's not the star attraction. Did you not enjoy it then, Mother? It keeps me regular. Yes, at one o'clock, club's getting a bit pricey. It's D-Day. Hmm? It's the deposit for France. Ah! Yeah, yeah. Bien so. In one ear and out the other. She's off gadding for a week. If God spares me. Mother. And if he doesn't, it might be a blessing in not much of a disguise. Nancy Gaskell will be OK. Just taking their Marion along for company. A daughter. Right. Simple soul, Marion. A goiter the size of a cooking apple. Looks after her mum, though. Yes, she calls in to see her every day. But she doesn't have Nancy living with her, does she? Mm, you're right. There's no complacency set in. Marion cherishes her mother as if every day could be her last. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah, how was it? Oh, they're dropping like flies. I'm trying to persuade this one to come with me. Turning up her nose at a free holiday. Free? How come? Well, how should I know? Someone's dropped out or summered. Well, you know, Deirdre. She doesn't so much look a gift horse in the mouth as send it off for an X-ray. Well, I wonder where I get that from. Honestly, no offence, Mother, but it's not exactly my peer group, is it? Marion's 50 if she's a day, and she's a smoker. And she's going through the change. Nancy said that Marion said the night sweat... Too much information. Oh, free trip to France, love. Not a bit smiffed at. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to be here forever, Deirdre. There'll come a time when you might be singing Je Regret Beaucoup. <laughs> I think you'd have a great time, an epic voyage. Air conditioning, brief encounter on DVD, fold-away tables, fizzy water. The one o'clock club travels in style. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty tempted myself. Uh, it's a numbers thing, Kenneth. It, it has to be a woman. But if uh, Deirdre's too busy sharpening pencils at the council... Oh! Go on, then. Ring Nancy. Tell her I'm coming. Say, movie year. Yeah. You'll have a ball. They'll all be delighted. Steve. Dee will be late. Oh. Where are you going? Roy's Rolls. Apparently, I have to meet the committee. Oh. Oh, is that the one o'clock club overseas events committee? Oh, you've heard of them. Well, quite a formidable bunch, legend, has it? It's a shame your life is so empty you have time to poke fun at others. I'm laughing with you, not at you. I'm not laughing. Oh, got that wrong, then. Hello? Oh, hello, Adam. No, 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 nothing important. No, we're just trying to track down Peter. I haven't spoken to him for ages. Right, I'm ready. When was this? Mother, I'm ready. Right, Ooh. come on. Oh, you still here? Where's the committee? There's been a delay. Yeah, last we heard they were waiting for a breakdown truck. Any news from Adam? Oh, let's get to work. Uh, do you want another drink? I know, better not. She's a terrible driver. Who is? Nancy Gaskill. She's probably crashed into a tree. <gasps> and she's organising this trip to Lords. She won't be driving the coach. Well, I should hope not. 
Blanche, thank goodness you're here. I thought you might have gone. And you must be Deirdre. Yes, pleased to meet you. Uh, is there no one else? I'm a one-woman committee. President, treasurer, secretary and events organiser. Multitasking's my middle name. Oh, very impressive. Unless you'd be interested in serving. Oh, no, I don't think so. No, of course not. You're already doing so much for us, above and beyond. So many of our club members look forward to our little trips. But they wouldn't be able to go without the hard work of our care of volunteers. Care of volunteers? Don't worry, it won't be all hard work. Some folk do need quite a bit of help, but I'm sure you'll get a few moments to enjoy the trip too. Accompany some of our ladies to the toilet. Things aren't what they used to be in the downstairs department. Look, I, I'm not 100% sure I can make it. I, I have to check with work. She's on flexi time. If that's not a licence to go off willy-nilly, I don't know what is. It's very short notice. You always find time to swan off and have your nails done. We're so grateful for your help. Between you and me, this is probably the last chance saloon for a fair few of our members. Speak for yourself. I've got another 30 years left in me. More's the pity. Life can't be much fun when you've got the Grim Reaper breathing down your neck. That's why this pilgrimage to Lourdes is so important. You're a star, Daphne. Deirdre. She's too coarse-featured for a Daphne. Daphne's a delicate with little noses and rosebud mouths. More tea, anyone? I'm gasping. A stick an extra tea bag in this time. Last one were like maidens. Thank you very much, Mother. Don't you... Buds, I ask you. We're not even Catholic. Well, you never know. If you go along with an open mind, you might find it very interesting. Typical of her. A free trip abroad and not one ounce of gratitude. Yes, but I'm chief cook and bottle washer, aren't I? Not to mention backside wiper. Oh, I dread to think. Dear, let's take your marigolds. <sighs> A person could die of thirst round here. Right, same again. Deirdre should go. She'll be waiting on us hand and foot in Lourdes. Might as well get some practice in. I like taking all your... Oh. I'm on my last legs here. Is someone going to cook me tea? Or am I going to have to report you to help the aged? Oh, Blanche. Well, I've not got much in. Is there a tin of corned beef in the cupboard? Oh. Well, I could do um, corned beef hash, jazz it up with a few carrots and what have you. Oh, why can't you be a proper daughter? Do something out of Delia. Something with a nice bit of garnish on the side. Hello? Peter! Good to hear from you. It's Peter. You don't say. I might be old, but I'm not deaf or stupid. <laughs> yeah. I was just saying to Deirdre the other day. It's ages since we heard from you. I can't wait to go to Lourdes. I've got my list ready. Fix me eyesight. Sort out my dodgy hip. Clear up that fungal growth on my left big toe. No. You could ask oh, I'm them, sorry to hear that. To be a better cook. Now, that would be a miracle. Well, how's Simon bearing up? Hello? Peter? What's happened? Bad news, I'm afraid. Lucy's died. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, I don't know. He, he was too upset to say. He just said, I've got to go and put the phone down, virtually mid-sentence. What's that? French phrase book for our trip to Lourdes. Mm. That'll be useful. You won't say that when you've looked at it. There's hardly a useful phrase in it. Oh, I don't believe that. My cat appears to be under the weather. Who the heck's gonna need that? Somebody with a cat. Who in their right mind would take a cat abroad? Especially to France, where it could catch rabies. Well, there you are, you see. It is a useful expression. Right, then. What you need in a phrase book are things like... Um, do you know where there's a clean toilet? Or 
How do I know this isn't horse meat? Bother! It'd sell a million. You know, when you go to places like Lord's, you have to believe before any healing can take place. I don't hold out any great hope in that department. Well, it seems to work for some people. Not if this book's out to go by. There's an entire chapter on illness and hospitals. Place can't be that much cop, can it? A cup of with milk and a no sugar discount if you've got it, which you haven't. It's funny how you're called Blanche, isn't it? Funny? Yeah, well, don't people Blanche? Have you heard that right? Like, um, when someone says something rude, she's blanched. Some people do say it, yes. Yeah. And then you what says out oh, what comes into your egg gets called Blanche, eh? It's brilliant. I don't think character can accurately be judged in the earliest weeks of a baby's life. And if it could, she'd have been christened common and you'd have had fun. <laughs> Are you going to tell me how much? <laughs> now, hey. Hey, she's blanched. <laughs> no, nope, today your charges are dropped. It's worth every penny just to keep on saying it. Your charges are dropped. You and me both love. Well, I'll have one of them bakewells to take out. Keep me blood sugar level up for the meeting. What what meeting's that? Extraordinary meeting of the one o'clock club at half past three. <laughs> hey, hey! It's five P. Keep it then. I'm not so sure Blanche suits her. She should have one of them double barreled names like Ungrateful Cow. Mother! I thought she was at that Lord's meeting with you. So did I. Time I got there, she was already barred. Barred? <sighs> For publicly demanding that Nancy Gaskill take her shoe off and show everybody her cloven hoof. She wouldn't, though. What does that tell you? Mother, it's a pilgrimage we're going on. You can't go round accusing people of being the devil. All she done was allocate coach seats. I know who got next to the port -a -loo. Still no reply. Did you leave a message? Again, yes. Oh, it's up to him then, isn't it, whether he wants to talk to you or not? As I recall, this woman that's died... Lucy. She wanted nothing to do with Peter when he were alive. She didn't, know. Which is hardly surprising. All I'm saying, he might not be as upset as you think. What, he might be pleased she died? He might be thinking good riddance. Although they might have been in contact, we don't know. Yeah, but whether they were or not, this is the woman he married and who had his child. He can't be indifferent to what's happened to her. So why is he not talking to you? Because he knows what you'll be thinking, and he doesn't want to have to tell you how wrong you are. Here we are at last. You OK? Tired. You tired? Yeah, me too, mate. It's been a long journey. Come on. Oh. Right. Let's go and give Grandma and Grandad the shock of their lives, shall we? Miss Peter, I think, yes! Hello! Yes, me again, I'm afraid. Oh, don't be silly, it's lovely to see you. It certainly is. And you. <laughs> hey, Blanche. <laughs> no. OK, then, let's, uh, we'll do the introduction, shall we? This is Ken, this is Deirdre, and this is Blanche. This is Simon, sir, Lucy's son. Hello, Simon. Then what's he doing with you? Oh, whatever it is, he's very welcome. Of course he is. No, it's, uh, it's a good question. Yeah, but it doesn't need answering now. Come on, sit down. Oh, come on. Oh, big lad. So, have you just come up from Portsmouth? Uh, this morning, yeah. And has he had anything to eat? Uh, some crisps. Oh. Is that all? Bet you're starving, aren't you? <laughs> uh, say night-night. Night, night, darling. Nice. Hi, Prime Let's go and check this new bed out, then, shall we? Hmm? Well, she's lumbered him there. Mother! Or, to put it another way, she's given him the greatest gift possible, a son. Now, I think Lucy, bless her, has done a wonderful thing. Yes, I do. 
Although it is going to be a big change for Peter. Yeah, or well, maybe that's no bad thing. He's a lovely little lad. Yeah. Our grandson. <laughs> anyway, I said I'd take Peter next door for a drink. Oh, I'll come with you. No, you won't. I've had enough of your opinions for one day, and I'm sure that Peter doesn't want to hear them either. You're babysitting with me. 180, please. Oh, God, you know, I'd forgotten we had all this stuff. I must pass it on to Steve. Oh, Ken, do you remember this? Ah, <laughs> yeah, I certainly do. Your Auntie Tracy loved dressing up as a fairy. I hope you're not thinking of dressing him up as one. Of course not. We're looking for something Halloween-y, aren't we? Ah! What are you doing? Trying to cheer him up. He's as miserable as the other one. He's just lost his mum. What do you expect? I've just spoke to Adam and told him that we'd be back in a couple of days, so... Is that a mask you're wearing, Blanche, or have you just not shaved this morning? Very funny. Well, it's no use. You're just going to have to go as a ghost. It's the quickest thing I can make in the time. Shouldn't you be packing for the trip? I'm surprised you've got the gall to mention it. Nevertheless. Look, I'll do it later. I'm dealing with Simon right now. Putting it off won't make it go away, you know. Ooh. Look, I can do that. I mean, it's only a matter of cutting a couple of aisles in that sheet, isn't it? Probably end up ear holes with you doing it. Look, I tell you what you can do. Nip to the cabin. I'm sure Rita's got some sides. He could go as the Grim Reaper. Oh, very apt. Oh, Peter, I'm sorry. I forgot. Um... It's all right, Deirdre. I don't think he's going to make that connection. I think that's a great idea. I'll do that. It's about as much use as a wet tea towel. Give him a chance. At least he's making an effort now. That pumpkin soup were disgusting. Complaint at chef, not me. Oh. That pumpkin soup were disgusting. Yes, but very good for you. They said the same of cod liver oil. I never believed that either. Those for the customers. The fat little kiddies when they come trick or treating. <laughs> if any of them come round knocking on ours, all they'll get is a thick ear. Oh, lighten up, Blanche, it's only a bit of fun. <laughs> I bet you were the sort that tied folks' doors together, then knocked before you ran. <laughs> or smashed the windows. What do you want? A little unfinished business. May I remind you that she was released without charge. This is close to harassment. Rebecca Granger, I'm arresting you on suspicion of theft, criminal damage and assault, occasioning actual bodily harm. You what? You I don't need to no say one. anything, but it may no, harm whoa, your defence. No, what are you on about? You assault? Where have you dreamt this up from? It's not dreamt up. The victim's pressing court. charges. You what victim? Say, maybe we'll discuss that at the station, eh? No, no, no way. I ain't coming with you. No, th this is all a pack of lies, Roy. Cuffer. Do it. You get lost. Oh, get off! Do you want me to do you for resisting arrest as well? This is totally unnecessary. It's an infringement of human rights. I hope you're not trying to prevent the course of justice, Mr. Cropper. I'm not sure that this is justice. Don't worry, Becky. I shall sort this out. Take over, Blanche. Hello. Hello, Emily. What? Nothing. Do you know, I can't remember what I came in for now. That poor girl. She gets more doolally every day. Sweetie. Oh, I don't mind if I do. Put your phone in, you fancy man. Shut up, mother. Who is she on the phone to? Nancy. The volunteer coordinator for this Lord's trip. Oh, she's still going on it, isn't she? Pulling out. Well, I mean, now you're back, and Simon. Let's hope he's not simple. That could lead to some dreadful nicknames. Blanche! Look, Dad, I don't want Deirdre changing her plans because of me. I'm enough of an imposition as it is. Oh, she's been looking for any excuse to get out of it. Those poor cripples. Blanche, you can't use words like that. In any case, she's only going in the first place to keep you company. Ah, yes, until they booted you out for being a heathen, I know. Good news travels fast. You didn't have to cancel your trip, you know. <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing. She's a piece of work, that Nancy. 
Oh, I can't back out now, apparently. It's too late in the day. Great. And to add insult to injury, the coach leaves at 6am. What, in the morning? No, 6am at night. Oh, so right. She's managed to talk me into going staying the night at hers. She does that, does Nancy. Does she? Oh, yes. Renowned for it. Um, She'll be pulling that old... Uh, I'm scared of sleep down my own. Can I hop in with you, Trick? You watch. Nancy's not like that, is she? She can't be. She's an Arcala. Well, sooner you than me. Unless she looks like Tyra Banks, then you can count me in, you know. Oh, my life just gets better. Oh, I could uh, give you a lift over in the morning. Well, and get to Werneth for 5.30am. Oh, yeah, right. right. Look, I'm, I'm sure Nancy's a lovely woman. She's got a cat called Navratilova. I hope you're not allergic. Oh, shut up, Mother. I happen to know that Nancy lost her husband last year and his name was Phil. Not just short for Philip, though, is it, Deirdre? Arcala or no Arcala, you watch your step. Have a good time. I'm sure your reward will be great in heaven. Can I just check the address for my sat -nav? Lobelia Gardens, just off Ashthorpe Road. You're very au fait with her living arrangements. I went to a tabletop sale there. Dreadful knickknacks. And if you need a tabletop, though, eh? <laughs> Lords, here you come. Hey, you might see some burn a day, you never know. I'm more likely to see Nancy's collection of novelty thimbles. She's got one as a screensaver on her phone. If you found anything tasteful in her house, it'd be a miracle. Give Simon a kiss for me. Ask her to show you her Billie Jean King memorabilia. <sighs> she gave a talk at the uh, one o'clock club. It was fascinating. Was it? She did no such thing. But our Deirdre will be on edge all night, Blanche. See you soon. OK. Take care. No, don't shout in the street. It's common. This is... What? Waving. <laughs>